keep attacking. Look, Ryan, we'll come back to you. Let's head now to Lord George Folks, who joins us uh, down the line. I just want to ask you what you make of Labour's actions this week, especially Keir Starmer's decision-making. Oh, good evening, Rosanna. Nice to talk with you. Uh, I, I think the way you've introduced this uh, item uh, confirms me in what I uh, had come to, around to believing, that this whole thing is a diversionary tactic uh, uh, organised by the, uh, the right-wing media and the Tory party, and uh, it's to take attention away from the way that Sunak has been uh, uh, challenged recently. His leadership is being challenged by Kemi Badenoch and Penny Mordaunt. Uh, he had that astonishing £1,000 uh, bet with Piers Morgan that uh, people would be de uh, deported to Rwanda before the election. And then he made this awful gaffe at Prime Minister's question when he tried a joke on uh, the, on transgender when uh, Brianna Gay's mother was in the gallery. Uh, and obviously they're desperate to take attention away from that. And you and the media are uh, helping them. And no doubt your owner, Mr Murdoch, will be delighted by the way you've introduced this item. Lord George Fox, it's great speaking to you too and appreciate uh, your, can your candidness and your candour this evening on the show. And that's why we've invited you on, uh, is you. to hear from the likes of you and to hear about you talking about your party. You've got, you cannot go into an election and not expect to be scrutinised to some level. Um, no, there have been not. some missteps not. made by Labour this week. Can you not agree to that much? Yes, it, it's funny how there was a delay in the information which was recorded at that uh, uh, that meeting uh, was uh, re released uh, by the Daily Mail. You know, it, it's still a surprise. Do you know it's uh, what it's the hundredth anniversary of uh, coming up now? Go ahead. Sorry, hundredth anniversary. It's the Zinoviev letter. A uh, hundred years ago, just over a hundred years, under a hundred years ago, uh, there was a, a red scare. Uh, which uh, scuppered Ramsay MacDonald's uh, government, the first Labour government. And this letter, which uh, pretended that uh, uh, Labour was linked in some way to Russia, turned out to be a forgery. And uh, we're getting used to these kind of things now in the Labour Party. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the thing is, we just, to get on with putting forward our policies, uh, and uh, the, the people will see that, and we'll be doing that over the next few months. And, and when people see how their cost of living has gone up, when they see the uh, waiting lists in the NHS, when they see the uh, educational attainment going down, when they see the uh, millionaires getting richer and the poor getting poorer uh, and the uh, young people starving uh, in some of the poorest parts of the country, then they'll come round to voting Labour. I have no doubt about that. It doesn't matter what you and your friends in the media, whether they're owned by Mr Murdoch or by the uh, other right-wing owners of the Telegraph, of the Daily Mail. Uh, Lord uh, Rothermere, where does he live? Some tax haven? Uh, uh, making George millions Fox. and billions of money. I'll remind you once, once again. And I, know, I know, Rosanna, you're doing what you're asked to do, and you do it very, very well. You're uh, a great... Uh, you're, you're a very experienced... Uh, uh, I'm a very experienced present, journalist. You do it very yes. well, but you've got you've got to recognise who you're working for, who your master is, uh, and you you do Lord what George, your master tells you. Lord George Fox, I remind you, of course, that we have invited you onto the show because we do, uh, you know, fully believe in hearing right. from all sides. We hear from every single side in this country, that's from all on. parties as well. On. And that's and, why I came on. And, have a look at the Zinoviev letter, and it's a very interesting to, the, to your thing point to... on that, sir. And I'm going to go on and speak about polling, about reality of polling shortly. Chris Hopkins, but I want to also point out with your point about the Zinoviev letter and the Red Scare, and whether or not these leaks are some sort of conspiracy, the Mail Online leak, and the rest of it. Azar Ali has apologised for the comments he made. He acknowledged that he made the comments. So if there is any kind of inference here that this wasn't reality it has been acknowledged as reality by your own party i'm going to i'm going to go across to chris hopkins now to talk about the polling on this because we have seen a slight dent in labor's polling today chris talk to us about what you've noticed and is it a direct result of the last week yeah i mean i think it's impossible to say whether whether our results today are 
a uh, direct result of what we've seen over the last week, or even be you know just an outlier. You know, our, our, our most recent polling showed a Labour lead of, of twelve points. Now, the big sort of headline with that is that it would still, we think, result in a pretty significant Labour majority if it was to be played out at a general election. But at the same time, our polling a fortnight ago showed a lead of nineteen points, and that would have been an absolute landslide, potentially you know putting the Conservative Party in, in, in a real pickle come the come the next election. So you know, we do believe that there has possibly been the start of some movement away from the Labour Party but really it's far too early to tell as I say a whether that is going to be an ongoing trend or whether this poll is just an outlier or b whether if that is an ongoing trend whether it's down to the events of the last week or not. And Chris what can you tell me about the way that voters are thinking at the moment that you're polling are they looking at the Labour Party as Sir Keir Starmer are they looking at the policy points or are they looking at Labour as a sort of cohesive whole? I, mean, I think let's make no mistake that Labour's lead that they have built up over the last two years is has been a vote away away from the Conservative Party or to Conservative voters uh, voting against the Conservative Party rather than for Labour. I think there is still a perceptions issue with the Labour Party, whether um, whether Labour peers or Labour MPs believe that to be legitimate or not, you know, isn't really for us to say. But we measure public opinion, we measure public perceptions, and there is still this this idea of the Labour Party that the public aren't entirely clear what they stand for and i think one of the reasons why they are in this this you know, very large lead position even though our lead does appear to have come in somewhat is because the conservative party have been uh, frankly a bit of a disaster over the last two years but that's not to say that the general election at some point this year is a foregone conclusion at the moment i think the labor party still have to secure those votes they still have to make sure that that, that they do have enough direct switches from the Conservative uh, 2019 vote, and it remains to be seen whether they can do that. And I don't think that long term, weeks like the week that they've just had is necessarily going to stand them in good stead for a short campaign where that scrutiny is just going to intensify. Chris Hopkins, Lord George Fox, Ryan Sobey, thank you for a fascinating discussion to open this show. We'll see Ryan again later on in the programme.